Women Matters in July, mid-July 2022. The importance of family in our time <laughs> should be our conversations topic. If it is, if it stays that, we will see. As you know, we are very co-creative and <laughs> sometimes we run away on tangents. <laughs> First of all, tech in. Who wants to start? I'll you. be happy to start. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of short and sweet. Um, the Kindle version of my book, Choosing Compassion, The Enneagram's Nine Pathways, is almost finished, which means mm. both of them, the hardcover and the Kindle are ready to pop up. And what that does is put a little bit of pressure on me because I have to, as you well, as we know from Amazon, I have to have a bio and a description of the book. So that's what I'm doing right now. So it, it's, uh, it's tricky. Let's just put it that way. It's tricky. And my editor is sort of making it worse right now. So I get to take charge of the reins a bit and see what happens. So that's, that's kind of my life at the moment. Once you, once you write that and put it up there, you can't change it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, well, that's You are sure. stuck with it. <laughs> so that's my news. Maybe you say your name and where you're from, so oh, people yeah. who, who just, thinking. just see this. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I usually forget that. Um, Christine King, I live outside of... Asheville, North Carolina, on a lovely farm bordered by a beautiful creek. Are you giving over or do you hope that somebody else would? Oh, yes, okay. Let's see, who wants to go? Monia. Hey, I'm Monia. I live in Vienna. And it's rather hot. And I had a very interesting dream because I was reminded by your mentioning your book. I had a dream uh, that I should write a book. Hmm. And the topic came up in a dream. And I got up in a dream to write it down. And when I finally woke up, uh, I almost had forgotten the topic, but then I remembered it because I'm a, a rather an expert, so you don't move and you keep the position in the bed and then the dream will uh, show itself. And the topic is amazingly um, that our collective weakness may turn into our collective strength. I have no idea what I would write about it, but in my dream, it was rather easy and I was just, yeah, I, I wrote and wrote and I know that I should write it in handwriting in a special book. And the other thing of it was that the light in us uh, may be so blinding that we sort of dim it down. Mm. And this is also quite interesting because I haven't thought about it and I saw it in myself, I saw it. Uh, so I'm wondering how, what I will dream tonight and how it will turn out, but it's quite interesting. So that's where I am right now and I pass on to Martini. Martini, you are muted. I muted you when you got up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking for a right spot. Um, I, I do see myself so, so large and, and I don't know what to do, but it's fine. It's, yeah, Completely it's fine. fine. Um, uh, very nice, Beatrice and um, Victoria. I didn't see you for a long time. And I hope, Beatrice, you are feeling okay. A little bit, yes, yeah. Um, I had a very busy day. Um, um, Monia, I think this is a beautiful topic. What you uh, dream of? What did you do that you have such a dream? 
<laughs> I'll tell I, you, it was the first, I, first night that I really yeah. slept uh, because before we had now crows and they, they just are uh, in the trees and they started until midnight and then and they started five o'clock in the morning and last night was nothing. It was quiet and peace and I had my, uh, my sinuses unblocked. So it was really a, a good night. And so I had a marvelous dream. Mm -hmm. Fine, fine. And what did I do today? We have beautiful weather and I was swimming and uh, I feel good. And I painted um, in my studio at the moment, but I don't want to show anything. So I, I moved to the, to the open door, but now I hear music from outside. Do you hear it? Okay, then that is fine. Then I can leave the door open. Uh, well, I'm very pleased with the big family as a theme because it is just like the, uh, uh, the topic we had before, the bigger uh, one and, and uh, also the Einheit. It, it has to do with each other and also the um the topic of ammonia i i think it's just fine and i'm very curious what we will talk about i give over to um christine she has already done so oh and to victoria and beatrice mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. Um, if we're introducing where we are, we're both together for the first time in a very long time in um, La Mesa, California. And um, for the moment, it's um, a lovely day. It's rapidly getting quite hot and I don't have air conditioning, but there's a breeze right now. And, um, and Beatrice is, well, you can speak for yourself. So I hope. <laughs> <laughs> throat permitting. Go ahead. No, you tell your check-in. Oh, all right. So my check-in, well, my check-in has to do with you, so you should speak. According to Monia, I speak too much for you. You can't say that. <laughs> oh, okay. So, <laughs> um, yeah, well, well, Beatrice and I are, are collaborating, if uh, help permitting, on Friday night in um, my first live concert since the beginning of the pandemic. Um, with my uh, longtime pianist, um, who we, we've been playing together since 2005. And um, but just before the pandemic, we not, I mean, we couldn't play during the pandemic for obvious reasons. But beyond that, we had a huge, um, a huge fight. Well, not fight, but we basically got divorced, <laughs> musically divorced. Um, just before the pandemic, and um, and so the pandemic was kind of a blessing because it it uh, it let things simmer down, and um, now we're playing together and we're we're friends. And I just had a fabulous rehearsal with him yesterday in Pasadena. Um, long trip, but worth it. And so I'm excited about the concert, and I'm very much hoping Beatrice will be well enough to dance. She danced for our rehearsal last week, and um, my pianist especially was so. Um, incredibly smitten by her improvising that um, he's just over the moon and all day yesterday, she wasn't with us unfortunately yesterday, but he kept saying, oh, I can't wait for Friday to see Beatrice dance. So um, <laughs> but I'm hoping she'll be well enough. So um, here you are. Hi. Mm. Um, Hi. Don't turn oh, right. it be. Um, I, well, <laughs> I turned 30 on Saturday um mm, and congratulations probably, thank you but I woke up sick oh. I'm trying not to read too much into it I've never been sick on my birthday before um so I had a whole party planned I was going to go to the beach and everyone was going to come and we were going to hang out and um and I had to cancel everything um I'm still sick um that's the big news. It'll be a nice party. <laughs> the big news is I'm 30 now and I'm sick. Um, 
I, I am no longer in New York. I packed up my entire apartment. It was very stressful and a lot of work. Um, I have subletters in there now and I flew across the country. I spent some time in Portland, um, Oregon. I uh, won some dance competitions mm. during the 4th of July weekend. Mm. Um, and then uh, drove down to San Diego over the course of a few days, uh, 20 hours of driving, mm. um, which is probably why I got sick. Um, and here I am. So that's, yeah, I hope I'm very excited about Friday's concert, but I, I don't know. I mean, at least it's only Monday. So I, hopefully my body will come back together in time. Anyway, that's my news. I'm very congested. My throat feels like someone has taken a knife and carved mm. out the edge of it every morning. I feel that way. Um, I've had fevers and headaches and so anyway. So no COVID? I tested negative for COVID. I had COVID in May, so I don't think it's, I mm. think it's a bad cold, but I might test again. Mm. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I don't know. I'm hoping, the hope is that I'll be well enough on Friday to perform and that I can do my birthday party the coming Saturday and just kind of, you know, let this week so I jump in. There are some uh, very good alternative medicines like uh, colloid of silver or also CDL, chlordioxid solution, which is, it has helped me with the uh, urinary um, thing uh, which I had, you know. And it's really, it's antibacterial, anti antiviral, and it helps in a very quick time. You have to see to start with lower dosage and to see how you digest it. But that's much better than any antibiotics, at least when it's not really heavy. I mean, when it's a heavy illness, I, I probably would uh, not trust on, uh, on this uh, immediately. But as soon as you can let off the heavy drugs, use this. It doesn't cost almost anything and it's very effective. Can you email after the session? Yeah. I Thank will. you. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know what that is too. I just oh, want I to it in the chat. I continue with the check in, Gertrude, and you do the, the, the last turn. So I have um, a friend now here, I, uh, and his uh, former girlfriend, she was here already, and she has gone away now. And um, but they they are fine together, and I, I like this uh, sort of company. I cook for them, and I get some money for it, and I'm glad. And it's also quiet, you know. It's a long term acquaintance. He he was also once my student in singing. He's a music uh, teacher, and he comes here for the twenty sixth year. So we have a sort of a... Uh, Martini, can you mute yourself here? Yeah, I Pretty can loud. for her. Wait, I do it for her. She is forgetting that. Okay, now I muted you, Martini, it's fine. So I wanted to say that we, uh, last year we had our silver, how do you say, silver wedding in some way, no? Because 25 years of continuous coming here and this year he came again and he plays the tuba and sits behind the house and boom, 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 boom. And I love it. <laughs> so my days are quite nice. I eat much too much because when I cook, I eat. So, but when he's gone, I will dim down a, a bit. And the doggy is better now. She was quite ill and at the beginning, for three weeks, I gave her antibiotics. Now I try to go over to the CDS, CDL, but the problem is to get it into her mouth. She doesn't want, she gets sort of, you know, as if it goes into her trachea, into her um, lungs instead. So I don't know how to administer it because it needs water. So you can, and when it is in the water, she wouldn't drink it. So I need to find a way to uh, get it into her. But with humans is no problem if it uh, tastes a little bit like strange. I mean, you know, medicine doesn't need to be in, uh, chocolate. So 
you, you drink it, but dogs, mm, not so much. Yeah, but as I said, she's better now. I have to go to the vet again for the final taking off of the stitches. And then, yeah, and it's hot here, 38 so something. So, and you see me now. I normally have all the shawls around and so, but. <laughs> Okay, I'm looking forward to the topic of family because I have to create my family with people who are not, how do you say, uh, not connected with blood ties, but with friendship. So it's a, a different type of family. Gertrude, you have a lot of blood connected family and some new <laughs> ones. <laughs> um. Hausen and blood connected. Yeah, I'm Gertraud. I'm from Germany in the middle, north of Frankfurt. And um, yeah, we have a new extension of our family. My uh, third granddaughter is born and another one expected in April, uh, April, uh, August. So this, uh, she's now one, one week old. And, and it's so, so lovely to see my daughter, to get my daughter, like she's already there. She's already mother and doing the right thing and nursing is no problem. And so it, it's so, so sweet. So, and yeah, and daddy's at home for several weeks. So it's, just great. And tomorrow I'm going to th go there to Hamburg and see her first time in person. Yeah, and my, um, I just finished one year, a project of one year just last week. And I had the last workshops last week, uh, pretty dense, everything. So, so we, managed to have have it in time for this was a project that was planned and there's governmental funding involved so we had a deadline yesterday and um, we did it <laughs> like really like on the point and today the the the, the owner invited me for ice cream <laughs> so we had cappuccino and ice cream strawberry um what do you call it becher so it, fresh strawberries and ice cream and um yeah we had a wonderful conversation so about about the whole year and so i'm i'm preparing myself for more being with the kids and with the grandkids. Uh, so it's kind of summertime, but not, not vacation as such, but more visiting and supporting. Yep, so that's me. Okay, and because of this uh, latest occasion in your family, we thought to talk about family, the importance of it. What does family mean? I mean, I have said a little bit that for me, family is maybe a little bit different if I have any, if I can have any. So let's talk about that. What does family mean to you? I think we start with Victoria and Beatrice because I see them all the time together whenever it is possible. So family seems to be very important. <laughs> Do you want to say something? Oh, um, indeed. Um, yeah, that's why, why to Monia's uh, consternation, I, I tend to talk about Beatrice in the check-ins because <laughs> um, family is, is um, especially in the alienation, I've, I've always loved family and my mother came from a huge family and I had 16 first cousins just on my mother's side and grew up just thrilled um, at all the family reunions, Thanksgiving and Christmas. When my grandparents were still alive, the whole tribe got together. Um, my mother had 
uh, had six siblings. And as a child, that was just heaven for me. And I was always hoping that my parents would have more children because um, all I had was one older sister. And I, I always dreamed of being in a massive family. Um, so I was hoping to have a whole tribe of children, but um, God saw otherwise. Um, but Beatrice, in many ways, it, um, <laughs> in many different ways, is worth um, countless children. Um, so when, yeah, when her father died, then we, we really became, we, we were like one, the three of us were like one organism, like, like a three-legged stool. And when um, my husband died, when she was 15, it was, um, it, we really were out of balance, just like knocking a leg off a three-legged stool for quite a while. And we were in grief therapy and the therapist said every week we played different roles, but so sometimes she was the mother if I was feeling very overwhelmed by grief and I was her child and sometimes I was the mother and she was the child and sometimes we were friends and sometimes we were enemies. <laughs> so um, after a period of, of um, adjusting to the loss of, of our third leg or first leg really, um, we, we found, uh, you know, the, whatever relationship it is that we have now, <laughs> whatever relationship, <laughs> um, when she's sick, she's not, not, not the friendliest. So <laughs> I'm a little on edge. Um, so go ahead, <laughs> go ahead and speak. Um, but that's, yeah, the importance of family. I have to say, um, moving towards the other side of the subject at the, what Heidi's already referred to about non non blood family um i i you know i pretty much lost my blood family um in 2019 when my mother died um due to a whole drama where physical objects seem to be more important to people than members of their own family um but then I discovered you, all of you, thanks to Heidi, and um, and I started studying Buddhism. So I'm in a number of different uh, groups, and um, I really, honestly, can say with all my heart that I feel like in in you and in the the Tuesday group, um, I feel like you are my family, and um, and there's I've made some friends in other Buddhist contexts that I have like you have never met in the flesh, but I honestly feel our family there. I feel like they're people who really care whether I live or die and are there for me. And they understand me on a, on a deep level, actually much better than my biological family. Um, so it's kind of, I love the, the word um, Wahlverwandtschaft um, that, that Goethe, I don't know if he coined it, but um, I've always thought about that, that there are people who are really our family and they, they're the people with whom we share a deep bond, whether it's um, what we care about most in the world or whether it's our spiritual orientation or, um, and that that's more important, I think, than anything. And Beatrice and I are fortunate that we, we share both of those. So we're really bound together as long as she's not in a bad mood. So I'll pass it to you. <laughs> No, I don't have anything to add at the moment, but maybe I'll say something later. Okay. Should we pass it on or do you want to just jump in? Whoever wants to jump in. I jump in. I jump in and save the throat of Beatrice. There are some uh, good throat uh, medication. We have it in Austria. I don't know whether you have it too. It's called, oh, don't ask me. I, I'll check it later. <clears throat> Well, my family lives close by, just one block away. Part of my family, my first daughter. And I would never dream of mentioning her in a check room. I'm wondering why. Um, yeah, they are just, uh, we see them about every other day. And she calls if we need anything, uh, we want anything shop. And of course we want to go shopping by ourselves because it's much more fun, at least to the supermarket. 
and uh, the other daughter also dropped by just yesterday, so we see each other regularly. But I wonder why I would never mention them when I check in. It's the weather that's important. <laughs> and dreams that are important to me. Uh, and that my husband is now watching happily women foot, women's soccer. I never thought he would he'd go that low that he now watches women's soccer because uh, there is nothing else on, in t on TV. Um, on the other hand, as you mentioned, uh, that you don't have to be related to be a family. And uh, in particular in Vienna with the Wilbur Salon, and we have a peer group, and there are we have interests in common. Oh, by the way, <laughs> I also wrote the chapter about Wilbur in my book, but just one short chapter, which says also integral can be uh, transcended, but integrated. So that was one chapter in my book. <laughs> but writing it down is so much work in the beta mood. Uh, you have to be in a flow if you want. Uh, Christine, you know more, know more about that, but you have to be in a flow to write the book. I, I couldn't imagine. It's so easy in alpha. I wrote so much. And then, of course, transcribing it in, in beta is just boring. Anyway. Um, And my first daughter, they are so different, both of them. Um, the first daughter now got, she has three children and she works. And now she got a dog. So not to uh, ha have another child <laughs> because it's easier to have a dog, she thought. But of course you have to go to the doctor so often and you have to, uh, and uh, yeah, and, and it, he, she doesn't want her tail brushed, so she had to get the hair all off because it was all clotted and things like that. You never think about that with a child. But the dog is part of our family, and uh, she really keeps, when anybody leaves the flock, she is upset and she whines, and she is so. Uh, I now I know how a dog feels about you. And whenever she enters our apartment, she looks right away, where am I, where is Oma? Oma, this is me, grandma. And uh, when I'm not in the usual chair, she checks around and just grins at me and just wags her tail, or the tail wags her. So it's really, she's also part of our family. And she, she is joy uninhibited because we grown we humans <laughs> we humans we are yeah we are inhibited with our showing our joy or showing our our grief and the dog just she whines or she wags the tail and you know right away how she feels and yeah that makes it a lot easier um, yeah, not having a family, I can't imagine a life without having a family. That's, that's my approach to the subject. I pass on to whoever feels ready. I want to come Hi. in because it's so, excuse me, uh, Beatrice, do you want to immediately respond to her? Just something very quick, the joy uninhibited. I, I was taking care of this four-year-old in New York. And I just noticed every time that he saw a friend or a friend saw him say, Noah, you know, or Charlie or whatever the name is, and just run with this, this excitement and their arms are flailing and they're just, just thrilled, even if they saw each other the, the day before at school the children or, or earlier in the day, they were just always so thrilled to see each other, that, to see someone that they knew. And I always kind of marveled at that and thought, None of my friends do that when they see me, or I don't do that when I see my friends. <laughs> when does that go away? Anyway, that's it. Yeah, thank you. I wanted to jump in because I want to give the the, the counter uh, uh, narrative of the of 
I cannot imagine to be without uh, a family because uh, you said that, Monia, no? Because I sort of have a family. I mean, my brothers and sister, my sister is in America. My brothers are in three different places in Germany. But we don't have a relationship, really. We see each other every now and then, but nothing happens. We have no, no connection. So it's, it is as if I had not a family. And since I don't have children, I have a dog. <laughs> and I had a lot of cats, which are now I'm left with a, an only cat now and one dog. So the family has been reduced for the last few years. And that's sad, but on the other hand, as you say with the dog, she is definitely a part of my family feeling. That's, you know, when she was ill and, and I'm so preoccupied, oh, the cat, I think I told you the 19 year old cat, she died two months ago. She is so much part of my feeling family. Um, and the difference, what is the difference to human family? Ah. They don't talk strange things. <laughs> and there is the immediate connection while with the real family, unless they are around near you, like, like it's now with you, Victoria and Beatrice, you have to write an email and maybe somebody answers. Some, my, one of my brothers, I sent him a lot of material. And he almost never uh, answers. And I said, do you, do, why don't you answer? Oh, I read your things, you know, but you could say, maybe send me an Amoy or something, you know, that you have read it. No. So that's a strange way of relating. And we, we meet, there was a family meeting. I wasn't there. My sister in America, whenever she can come to Germany, I mean, it's almost, almost never. So we hardly ever have a, there is the, the WhatsApp group, yeah, you see the newest babies and so on, but that's not what I think, what my idea of family is. My idea of family is being in connection and not only about babies, you know, I think babies are important when you have them and when you have friends and so, and you show them like you did get how that's beautiful. But when then you are around them as it was in the past, and they are talking the whole two days only about their babies. I mean, I, I know. So I need to have some more exchange of something else also. Maybe if I had had children, I would have done the same, who knows? <laughs> so I try to find a family like you, like I would love to have people like you near near me to to be together really in person every now and then but it's not yet happening and who knows what will happen I can, think I, can, I, ask a, can yeah. I ask a question about that some of yes. the people who have come and stayed on your beautiful property um there was the hope that that could feel like family it does it does feel like family but you know it's sort of interrupted and the time, the, at least the people who, with whom I connect, the time they are here, it's beautiful, but then it's like not, not together anymore, you know? The next year, like these uh, guys, then the next year or in two years, they come again. That's beautiful. Like before I have a wonderful friend, she has her third baby now, but I couldn't see the baby because when I went to see her three weeks ago, because we couldn't go to the hospital. They didn't allow us to go in. But uh, I mean, with her, I have a very strong connection. She's half as old as me, more or less. But um, this, that's this sort of relationship, even if you don't write and don't meet for a year or two, but then when you come together, it's like, you know, as if you have, uh, left last week or something like this. That's what I what I think family is really. Okay, I give over to who wants to say. I didn't say anything until now. Um, I do appreciate uh, the family 
alive, not uh, via the computer. And we had the opportunity to celebrate uh, 50 old uh, niece of Ernst in Gastein. And this was a really fine family um, uh, happening. And it is uh, beautiful to have a family and to celebrate together. Um, yeah, it can be very intensive. Um, and uh, expectations uh, we can uh, throw it overboard and uh, just be happy what is um, uh, going on they had an um, open house so that everybody can come in. I thought that this is an open house uh, uh, day, that everybody can come in, but they stayed all the day and they invited at uh, six o'clock in the morning to um, uh, uh, überraschen, to uh, surprise. And, uh, to, to surprise the woman who is, is celebrating her 50th anniversary. Oh, I said, I wouldn't like this. But we went together uh, with six women and they were all younger and Ernst and I. Oh, and this was, they, they gave a champagne in the, in, the, in the morning and I cannot drink it, yeah? but I drank it. And, and <laughs> it was good as well. So I was so surprised about how they uh, celebrated and the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the woman had a crown out of, um, uh, you, you blow it up. And and uh, the uh, seeds they, of a dandelion. Oh, yeah. uh, and and I, uh, I think you have to be able to celebrate things, and this was a very uh, surprise for us and uh, all uh, my family. Uh, also, on, our daughter was there as well with her husband and uh, and the younger uh, son. And so it was, yeah, it was nice. And I think this is a, a little bit different as what we are doing now. Uh, you mentioned this as well. And um, Gertrude, you mentioned last time that you are surrounded by fine people and you are feeling well in your bubble or something like that, but you included your family and, and I, include uh, all the people who I'm thinking of uh, during the day. Uh, as uh, uh, today, I was thinking of you very much because I wanted to look for a certain text, uh, but I, I didn't have the time. I forgot about it because I was painting and um, I, I didn't do it. So, uh, yeah. Uh, things are coming along and uh, it is um, our life is a fest our life is a celebration all the time and I think this is beautiful You don't want to go, Christine. <laughs> You're muted. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you, I can. Um, I guess my silence is my sign of 
how it's redefining itself constantly. Um, and there are a few, um, I call them almost like stakes in the ground, beautiful energies that support me. Um, I, my heart's very close to my brother and sister-in-law and their triplets. So they're far away. Well, I've seen as far away these days. Um, they're, you know, they're on Mother Earth and they're in the United States, but we don't get to see each other given our lives. Um, my son is in um, Vancouver, British Columbia, and um, haven't seen them in a very long while because of COVID. Um, I chose not to be vaccined and Canada won't let me in. So, um, but we, we stay in touch on the weekends with FaceTime. But those are all just words. And the part of me that just wants to say how I feel about family, because I, you know, I had 13 international moves. So I didn't establish family around me. You know, I lived throughout Asia and Europe in my career. And so now that I'm much more settled in one place, what I'm noticing is anything that begins to feel like family, I am so grateful for it. There are people who show up to support me. There's a new friend who's right now um, editing my bio for Amazon. She has a PhD in English from Yale. So I think it's gonna come out a lot better than yeah. So I've only known her a short period of time, but she, I feel supported by her. And I, I feel supported by nature. So nature feels like family. And I don't, everybody keeps saying, why don't you get an animal? You know, you've got all this land. And at this time in my life, I don't want to be responsible to take care of an animal. <laughs> so I, I, what I most appreciate about this conversation is that I've got friends who I feel are family. And I feel like you all are family. And um, I, I can't imagine living without having that feeling in my heart, even though it is not a traditional way of defining family. It's my way of feeling the comfort and love that I feel that um, we all need that. Um, yeah, so mine's pretty darn different. Um, and I can just feel my heart saying, yeah, this, this works. Um, there are moments when I feel lonely and um, that hurts my heart, loneliness. So I attempt to do something <laughs> that fills my heart again so I don't stay in that place. So I think it's, it's kind of ties together. And this is the last thing I want to say. It kind of ties together what we talked about in our last group. Um, that is um, where we put our attention. If I put, you know, I, I love very dearly my son's dad. We're still close. He's 90 and doesn't look like he has too much longer. So I could feel like I'm losing him, but I don't. He's always gonna be deep inside me. So I think it depends upon how I put my attention. And I just, okay, thank you. Um. Family, for me, it has um, many connotations. There, there is my the the um, 
heritage and burden of my family from whatever um, abuse or whatever that was for generations. And um, yeah, and things like that. So, so like um, family constellations and everything, where you you just try to 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 unleash or unburden, <laughs> and that that's one part. And um, so, even in my lifetime, there was a was was enough that was not. Um, <coughs> what you would suggest for for a family as a healthy thing and i'm i'm in the middle of seven kids i was brought up in the middle of seven kids and was like like <laughs> sneaking my way through and um so there was a lot of the, so it's catholic and whatever so there is a, a very like how a family should be and how the kids should behave and the role of the father and the role of the mother and there's all this. And when I'm, um, so it's a little bit like Heidi said, I'm not very close with my siblings. Two of them died already. And um but there is a connection kind of by birth, by <laughs> knowing they are belong to the family. So, so even my kids are very like, this is uncle or aunt or whoever. And, and so they are closer than you would be with somebody who is not family. So that that's really interesting. So, so kids have a very good sense of what family means. And even if they don't see their uncle for half a year, it's still the uncle. <coughs> That's one part. And, and the other one is um, creating my own family with, uh, uh, so biologically we're not, <laughs> they are not all <laughs> the same combination. Um, Sorry. So for me, that is so important. I mean, they are so my my children and their kids. And so this is like and and the new daddy <laughs> from last week. Um yeah, to invite them, the boyfriends, into our family and say, now you you belong here and now you are part of it. So that, and, and my daughters, though they don't have the same combination, they would never say stepdaughter, a uh, step um, sister. So they are very, very close, even the younger ones like 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 twins and and still almost every day they call and and now they have four weeks apart they babies <laughs> so so i'm i'm there are so many layers to family that that i couldn't say this is family because there is the the dark side and and the very bright side uh, that i can see and then there is like by choice, family by choice, what you were talking about. Like, where do I feel connected? Where do I feel home? So it's like when I start, uh, when I did the first weekend with um, WeFlow, I was like, yeah, that's home. That, that feels that I belong to that tribe somehow. And yeah, and that didn't change. It's still, it's still this this home feeling. And yeah, so I think there are so many layers, and I choose, like like uh, Christine said, I choose what I think is the best 
expression of family. <laughs> so then, yeah, I choose those people there, choose those those circumstances and yeah. And for me, it has a lot to do with, we, we were talking about the larger we. So what is that larger we that supports me or we support each other? And that that's for me, this family part that isn't, that isn't defined by biology. So support is important. Yeah, and connection, just really like, like heart connection. It doesn't mean we have the same opinion, the same uh, political whatever, yeah. but there is this deep heart connection that doesn't burn, that doesn't disappear. It's just there. And the other thing that struck me was uh, that you feel responsible for your approach yeah yeah so i guess the family we create is the family we are responsible for or feel responsible yeah. for. Yeah. yeah for me for example to the responsibility goes that for most people go in on vacation um yeah to have a good time or whatever we couldn't afford it because we chose to do therapy and things like that to be better parents than we got from our heritage. And, and today I'm glad we did so, but you never know if the people, uh, if, if your kids say, okay, why didn't you and the others did? And so, yeah, they, they was my, not to survive, but to be good parents. And I think, yeah, you, you never know if despite or because of us, they turned out so well. But um, yeah, I think we, we chose that to say, okay, we, we want to develop in order to be, be better parents and create a family that comes out better <laughs> than what we used to have. Yeah. I think that's um, really admirable, Gertraud. And it makes me think, I, at one point, um, I reflected on this massive family um, on my mother's side with which I grew up and noticed in, in thinking about these 16 first cousins that I have, how in every single case, the eldest child of one of my mother's siblings, whoever it was, had, um, had major you know, psychological or emotional issues. And it made me think how I thought, why is it that we aren't all required to go to school and get a degree in parenting before we even try to think about such a thing? It's, it's, it's remarkable because in every single case also, by the time, my aunts or uncles got around to the second child and then the third child, it, it, they got better, they became better parents. And, but these poor first children had to, um, had to endure the sort of the experimentation as it will, or the learning curve, the steep learning curve of being a parent. And so I think that's really great that you had the foresight to, um, to do that. Oh, here's Ganga. Maybe I think she, she's an hour on maybe, she didn't know what time we're meeting. Ganga, is that you? Anyway, we are almost at the end. Uh, so if you want to show up, Ganga. I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong link. I'm so sorry. Okay. I'm so sorry to interrupt. No problem. Have a nice evening or day. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, family, it seems to be important. And also what I hear to in some way change family. If it's not the right way of um, experiencing it. 
I didn't do the work to change my family of origin. I, it was a time when I tried, when I was in, into psychology, you know, and then I tried to tell my, my siblings that we should come together and talk about our family and our childhood and so on. Only my brother, who is a um, psych, psychiatrist, he is the only one who, who is interested in it, the others. Not really, no. So we missed the chance to, to get clear how our childhood was because it was in many ways characterized, I wouldn't say about uh, abuse, but it was a sort of uh, pushing back the younger ones or the other ones. It was always like a fight. You always had to, to keep your crown and be, at least me, I was the first girl after two boys. I always had to fight against the, the bigger boys and they were stronger than me. And, you know, that's, it is as it is, but it would have been nice to talk about it. With my sister, I talked a little about it and I learned that I did the same thing to her, which I felt that my bigger brothers did to me. And so I thought, oh, okay. So that seems to be a family pattern and it would have been nice to work on it. I don't know how far they did it then with their children. Maybe somebody did, but I have no, no idea. And I agree, Victoria, I think we should, not only for keeping dogs, we should have a sort of a license, but especially for having to... <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't have known what to do if I have had a, a child. I probably would have done the same shitty things that my parents did, you know. So I, I'm, who knows? But look at what an incredibly fabulous grandmother you were to those, um, to that, the children in that German family. I mean, yeah, I, but... I thought, boy, I wish I had you. Um, well, I don't have grandchildren yet. I, I'm missing <laughs> ahead, sorry. <laughs> You will see, you will see when it's the time coming, yeah. So, yeah, I think actually there is a need for family and maybe also for grandchildren and for younger people around you. So if you call it family or not, it's another thing. And what I noticed with me, because you're saying this, I have the desire to share what I have learned in life and to share it with younger people. And fortunately, I have some younger friends, so that's nice. And maybe that's our life task, no? to learn and then try at least to give over what we have learned. Also, everybody has to do their own experiences. Yeah, thank you, girls. I think we come over to the checkout part. So what do you take away with what we have said and heard? tonight did you have some new insights or is, is it like it was before i think i will start with beatrice mm. it's because you've got stuff going on right now um well i i probably have things to say i just wasn't feeling like saying anything today um because i connected you know last august about almost a year ago now I connected with my Austrian family for the first time in decade. Yeah, 15 years or 16 years or something like that. Um, after a lot of division and turmoil and feeling like I didn't have that family at all. And now I feel very connected to them. And they all wished me happy birthday. My brother called me from Austria. And, you know, and this was, had never really happened before. But because of because we connected this last year, suddenly I'm you know I'm invited. They're going to do a family ski trip in January, and I'm invited to come along. Mm. It, it's just anyway. There's just it's, um, you know. But then I'm totally disconnected from my mother's family because they've cut us all off. And and so, um, anyway, it's interesting. Um. And certainly chosen families, a lot of people that I've had that have come around me to support me in the different places I've been. I, I, I find it sad that people live far away and I wish we could all just live in one place. And I was thinking about that on my birthday too, how many people in New York I wish I could celebrate with, but they're in New York, you know, and they're not here. Um, but also the people here I get, get to see, you know, who I couldn't see when I was in New York. So, um, 
anyway, I, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. It's interesting to think about what, what makes people family. And it's, I think it's, who are the people that you feel like you could call at any time of the day or, or that would be there for you no matter what happens? I think that's family. And whether it's biological or chosen, it's the people who love you unconditionally and, and show up for you, um, you know, whatever's going on in your life and take you as you are. And if you're, you know, a total mess one day or you're doing well the next day or whatever, you know, they're there for you. I think that's family. That's my definition. Thank you. My check oh, sorry. My check I just want to say my check out is to, um, to suggest that we continue this topic next time because I think there's still so much to talk about. Um, so that's my vote and that's my check out for now. <laughs> I'd like to oh, I'd like to talk about milestones because I turned 30 and everybody's telling me that's important, but I want to know why. <laughs> <laughs> I try to say to you, Beatrice, I think you gave a wonderful definition of family, a person who you could call all the time when you are in need of, of help or of support of whatever that should be family, or that feels like family. And often the regular family as my brothers, no, I wouldn't call them. But there are some people I might call, you know, so thank you for the definition. <laughs> That would be my checkup. <laughs> well, my checkup is rather short because <laughs> I'm getting tired. Ah, old age. Milestones. 30 milestone. Oh, Beatrice, what will you do at 40 and 50 and 60 and 70? Um, yeah. But I think we mentioned it somehow that you have to live it, not just to be on Zoom or, or, or uh, write mails. You have to live it. How? unexpected uh, non-spectacular it may be but just it's it's if you live it it's different so i'm very glad that my husband and i we went to new york and the children were born there and my grand and the grandparents didn't see them for quite some time months and to be that close when they are born and to help raising them is beautiful and that's one of the experiences I wouldn't have wanted to miss in this life and this is why I took certain made certain decisions when it was really when the first grandchild was on its way so yeah that's my checkout thank you thank you thank you I've got a quick short one um because I had experiences living in other cultures, I can kind of compare. I'm the only member of this group, I think, that um, doesn't have relatives from some other culture than the US. And what I notice in general within the United States, that there is a huge crisis of loneliness. And there's some brilliant Reisman is one of the ones who probably wrote the most eloquent work about um, the loneliness in this culture and how it's shame and vulnerability. And people don't want to own up to that. And yet we've built walls around ourselves, the way our homes are built. So I don't wanna go into a big study about it, but geographically the way suburbia has developed itself, we are isolated in cities and in homes, but I, my sense in Europe, um, in Asia, it's, it's very different. So that's, that's my checkout, which just the optimistic side of it is that um, I don't have to go down that path, I have a choice. 
I'm coming back to that. <laughs> you know, I, I don't have to be isolated. I've spoken, thank you. I feel a little bit um, strange because the family where I was born, I was not asked to be born in that family. Uh, the family we have, I was not uh, asked. Yes, we made the decision that uh, we uh, want this family, but it happened to me. And uh, you were talking about, uh, I make the choice. Uh, the, the choice is, it is coming to me. It happens to us. And, and um, it, it is a very different attitude. Uh, to uh, to my uh, point of view, and this also is um, when you say I am lonely. Uh, I think it is a very very important thing to be lonely and to be happy with being lonely, and uh, it, uh, I have. I was one of uh, seven children, like Gertrude, and uh, they were. I I had many um, things that I would lo love to that it happens to be, but it didn't happen. And when I asked my father something, he said, no, Martini, um, it is not possible because we don't have the money for it. So things happened uh, to me and I had to learn to live with it. And this is also with the family. Um, they are living in Holland and um, uh, being in the country where they never um, le they never left the country and they are in their narrow-minded family um, structure and it is very hard to get out of it and um, I had the opportunity to go to Vienna to go to Toronto and I see that the people all over the world are cooking with water. It is such a simple thing. And, and family uh, happens if, if you meet each other, for me. And um, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I do... Uh, I think it is hard for me to express what the family is. It is very important, but um, uh, it happened to me. It, it, I, I, I dreamed from a certain kind of a family when I was very young and just married, but it didn't happen. So, uh, um, uh, uh, maybe all the, the the fantasies that I had were not happening, but that I learned to live with the situation as it is. And uh, I have a feeling that uh, we have an open door and and people are coming to us and and they feel comfortable and uh, so do I go to other people and I feel comfortable and um, maybe sometimes I do feel too much and what is not really there because I um, when we were together in the beginning when I was listening to music, I was listen. I was thinking of you because we had an had an 
and discussion uh, uh, um, on a special topic. And I was listening to music and I was thinking of you, but this I cannot share with you because, uh, or thinking about literature. I would like to share it with you. Like you said, Heidi, I would like to share, but is the other person prepared to share? And then I feel that there is, um, and uh, be quiet, Martini. That's, uh, uh, um, if I'm uh, too spontaneous, it is uh, difficult for another to, uh, to jump with me and, uh, um, uh, and I feel, Lonely, yes, I do. But it, for me, it is a very healthy loneliness. And I'm married, and my husband also is uh, doing his uh, the things he loves. And my sister thinks we, uh, we we are together, and her husband died, and um, she is always thinking that our. Uh, uh, Marriage is ideal. Yes, it is ideal, but the loneliness is uh, every read in the poetry. Every uh, uh, poet is very, very lonely, and but they can share some sometimes a little bit with each other. And I, I think uh, we have to be very. Um, have no I no uh, uh, dreams about it anymore. I just uh, live family, and and that is my. Um, thank you. <laughs> Who is missing? me. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Martini, for clarifying it. I, I didn't say I like, like, in a sandbox, I put everything <laughs> together and, and, and built it by choosing. It's more like, how do I choose to live with what's happening? So what, what is it? Life throws at me, whatever. <laughs> And, and the choice is how to deal with it. So like the Buddhists would say, um, pain is unavoidable, but uh, suffering is optional. So, so how, how, what do I make out of what life throws at me? So that, that's, and also family. So I think, what do I learn from what happened yeah and for example in in you all said something like support unconditional support and whom could i call in in weflow we have what we call infinite backup backup is like a short coaching to support you in coming back to flow so everybody who did the training, they are in a WhatsApp group and you can 24 seven, you can call people and ask for backup to support coming back to, yeah, it's flow state and, and, and do the things you couldn't do and things like that. And this is really like, uh, there is no, so you, this is given with freedom and taken with freedom so it's like a big i wouldn't i don't know if i would say this is the family but but that's very close to just support it 24 7 365 so so that's that's my <laughs> takeaway and for next time for me it's it's fine either way milestones or family, yeah.
actually I felt a lot older with 30 than with 40. So this is really a thing. Yes. The I feel also the older I get, the sort of younger I feel, the body not, but the rest. <laughs> I see many heads and <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's good. Did we uh, did all the checkout? Victoria, you did it. Yeah, so I was a little bit distracted, maybe. So thank you, girls, ladies. Thank you. Thank you so much. See you soon. Bye bye. Have a good day. Even oh, one second. Um, are we switching to two hours earlier next time? Yes, two hours. Okay, it, just so we, we know. Okay. We Actually, I, I have uh, this this thing till uh, September. So let's, let's we will switch between yeah. uh, Christine and me. <laughs> so.